Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala Rasulihi Kareem Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. All praises are due to Allah, the Lord, Keeper, Evolver, Sustainer of all the worlds. Wa salatu, and may the prayers. Wa salamu, and may the peace. Ala Rasulahi Kareem Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam be upon his honorable, noble, and generous messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Dear believers, Muslim brothers and sisters, friends, guests, whoever may be watching this on Facebook or YouTube, we greet you all. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Um, we want to always remind ourselves just coming into this, beginning this kutbah, this lecture, this presentation, by reminding us today and always, even on this big day in America and any time, this is not just for today, always remind us, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, that Allah is greater than any and everything in existence that he brings things into existence as the creator. And to always remind us that he's always in charge no matter what's going on in our life or in the world. And that all praises belongs to Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. A reminder to us always that all praises are due to Allah, the Lord, Keeper, Evolver, Sustainer of all the worlds. And also to remind us that He knows it all. Al Alim, Alimu, Alimu, the All Knowing. Al Kabir, Kabir the Noah of the subtleties, etc. So today, believers, Muslim brothers and sisters, friends, others, we just want to take a little time from Quran as always and to look at something from Quran, what you see here, uh, al fil the elephant, so 105. This is where we want to get to because there's something in looking to Quran always and applying Quran to our life. To see in Quran and in this sort of here uh, something that relates to us directly as an individual, as community, but not only us as Muslims, as something maybe we can see here of great value to us as human beings, period. And so this is where we want to get to. We're not going to start here, but this is one of the so this is the soil where we're trying to get to and looking at some other ayats before that. Also, um, looking at this surah here and its connection with Surah Field, but also its connection and this message that we can derive in relations to us as human beings as Muslims, as human beings, <clears throat> something here, all of it, and you know Quran is a book for all times. We know there's wisdom in Quran, words in Quran that relates to things before Quran was revealed, history. There's wisdom, teaching in Quran relating to the time when Quran was revealed to Muhammad, the Prophet Islam as he lived in the 7th century. And there's prophecy in Quran that's pointing to the future as well. It's a living organism, a book for all times. So, dear believers, brothers and sisters, we just wanted to, as we've been doing the last couple of weeks, and it's been falling on Tuesday, we kind of start writing on Sunday and looking over it a little bit on Monday, and it's falling on Tuesday. So, it just so happened that it's fallen on this Tuesday, uh, 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 November the 3rd, 2020, which happens to be 
the election day, and I know some may be focusing on that right now, who's going to be the next president of the United States and all of that. Well, we're not, we're not doing this for that because this is Quran for all times. But most certainly we will mention that, and you may be watching that now more so than this, looking at the results. But always know, regardless, Democrat, Republic, Republican, or whoever, that Allah is always in charge at all times. And not that that is not important. Of course it is. America is the most powerful country in the world. And it's the most influential, has the greatest influence in the world. Just like ancient Egypt, you know, it was the most powerful and had great influence on the world. We know that, right? The Greeks and others used to travel there to learn in their mystery systems, etc. And, and, and we know it's so important when you study the history of Africa, Northeast Africa, Egypt, etc. So America is very, very powerful, and whoever becomes a leader in America is probably the most powerful person in the world. But we're not focusing on that, just that this is falling on that, and most certainly that's going to impact not only on our life, but it impacts on the world. And it's interesting because we also have the coronavirus, COVID-19, which is a pandemic, right, which is affecting the whole world. So today we're, we're doing this, it's happening the fall at that time, very important time as well. We're not going to play that down because it impacts on all of us, but that is not necessarily uh, our focus. And, you know, if you can pull away from the TV and listen, that's fine. If not, you'll watch it later, and uh, we'll what, find out whatever the results are. And before we move on in, Quran mentions the elephant, and it mentions the donkey. And this so happened that here, the symbol of the Republican Party is the elephant, and the symbol of the Democratic Party is the donkey, and, and maybe we'll touch on that, but we're going to go ahead and move on. But remember, Quran is a book for all times, and if we see these things, these signs before us, then quite naturally we go to Quran and get whatever wisdom, whatever connection, whatever perspective that we can get on all of this from Quran and life example of Muhammad the Prophet Islam. So didn't want to come with all of that first. So, as always, I uh, try to have a vocabulary, um, some words, some key words that we're going to focus on in reading some things from Quran. These words that show up in Quran and have uh, relevance, great significance in relations to the surah or ayat that we're discussing. So, we want to first go back to. Uh, the vocabulary. It's, it's two words. Two words. Two, two, two main words uh, in our, in our uh, vocabulary. These are some of the ayahs, inshallah, we touch on, inshallah, we won't be, we won't be long. And inshallah, we share something that would be of some benefit to us all in some way. Yes, so here's some words we call key words or vocabulary words in moving forward in our kutbah today or our presentation, our lecture, anything we're trying to share from the Quran. And those, the words here that we want to focus on that is very significant, and, and, and like I said, we're looking at this because it impacts on our life as individuals as community, and not only as Muslims, but as human beings. And I thought it would be interesting to, to discuss this and to make some comments as well. But more importantly, just to show us some things that's in the Quran that we may not readily pick up. And this word here is, first word, is Taira, Taira, Taira which is bird, bird, taira, bird. Its root letter is the ta, which is the hard T in Arabic. You have the soft T, and you have the hard T. 
Tairi. Tairi is the ta. This would be ya and ra. That's the root of this here. When you want to look this word up, that's what you will look under. Taira, the ta, the ya, and the ra. In English, that would be a T, and in Arabic, there's two T's. But in English, so I put this dot as the ta, the hard T. The T, the Y, and the R, those are the root letters. Okay? The other word we want to focus on is his root is the H. The hard H, like in, in uh, Hakim, um, 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 yes, uh, uh, like in, in Hakim, um, Hemdu, a lot of words, Hassan, etc. So it's a hard H, and you have the soft H as, it, as if in uh, Hadi, as we mentioned before, Hadi, uh, Guidance, Hudan, etc., right? Helau, the Hilau moon, etc. So its root letters would be the hard H, the 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 Jim, and the Ra, or the H J R. And the word is Hajar, 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 which means stone, like rocks, stone. Very important these words in moving forward. And then from Quran. Hajar. Now from this root here, the HJR, the root, you get a word Hijr. Hijr. Same root. Hijr. The had, the jim, the ra. Right? Hijr. Now this word Hijr, very important. You can find it in so at 89, I had 5, which, which is Fajr. Inshallah, we get to that. This word from root, from, from stone, same as stone from root, it means logic, intelligence, wisdom, thinking, thinking man, etc. So the same root from stone alludes to, also means in Quran, logic. Logical thinking, intelligence, wisdom, thinking. And we can, we can see that because just as stones support the earth, support the earth, stones, rock, support, solid, strong, right? It is our logic and our intelligence, wisdom, etc., that supports our actions, right? Right? Like logic, stone. So it's the same. In other words, why are you wearing a coat today? That's action. Why are you wearing a coat today? Because I'm cold. That's the logic. You see, that supports the action. Why are you drinking water? Because I'm thirsty. You see? So from Quran, you have, from this root, you also get, from stone, you get hijr. And that's in Quran, which we want to, Inshallah, touch on and tie in uh, and see what the connection there is with uh, Surah Fil and Fajr and our life because we're to be logical, intelligent, have wisdom, right? And the plural, uh, there's another word in Quran which is, and there's a Surah, uh, I think it's 49 or 47, you can look it up, and as I say, please, I didn't say it again, please take out your Qurans. You know, when we do this, I encourage you to take your Quran so you can follow along that way and just stay in Quran anyway, right? So, there's a surah, and you can look it up, called Hujarat. The H, the, the J, and the R. The Had, the J, and the R. Hujarat. And that word means the inner, the interior. Although it will be translated as the inner compartments, the inner chamber, the inner apartments, right? But it doesn't mean apartment itself. It doesn't necessarily mean chamber. It means the inner chamber, right? And we know in that surah it refers to Muhammad was how Muhammad the prophet is to be addressed, that those who speak out to him 
from the inner chamber, right, imposing themselves on them are, are not uh, enlightened. You know, they're not being sensitive. But you go ahead and read that surah and, and get that. I'm not elaborating on that. But I'm just showing you that hujarat means inner, the interior, right? Look it up. So, and we can see that connecting with hijr because logic, intelligence is what's inside here. So it's the inner apartments, the uh, uh, inner chamber. You can connect that. Now, the plural of hajr, it, you might see hijara, hijara. And you'll see that in Baqarah, I had 24, where Allah says, the hell is filled with men and stone. So you will see this hijara. Also, in Surah Thiel, you'll see hijaratin. Okay? So these are our key vocabulary words that we just wanted to present. Uh, vocabulary, keywords, etc. Now, inshallah, and moving forward, and, and if you have your Quran, if you have a few moments to pull out your Quran and sit down and read and follow along, that's good. If you're watching the results of the uh, presidential election, that's fine too. And inshallah, maybe you'll watch this uh, later, you know, and if you, if you desire, and inshallah, maybe it'll, it'll provoke some thought of some kind. But that's Quran. It's guidance, prophecy, etc. Thought-provoking. Encourage us to use our mind, our brain. In fact, if you go to Surah Yusuf, uh, I think it's the second or third ayat, Allah said he's given it to us in the Quranic language that we will use our aqu, our brain, keep the juices of our mind flowing. So now, having these words, having these words in mind, and I'm, I'm going to flip now to the, the ayat, that I want us to uh, to touch on, but what just came to me was what I just said in the second ayat of Surah Yusuf. So, the beauty of Quran, of its language, not for show off, not to impress anyone, all that other stuff is, is important, the tajwi recitation, all that's beautiful and affects us. But if you go to before I, I'm sending you to me places already, but it just came to me to go ahead and do it because I've mentioned it before. Well, Allah says in Surah Yusuf, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Inna anzonahu Quran Arabiya la alakum takilun. So always remember that what this says in the second ayat of Yusuf, we have sent it down as a Arabic Quran, la alakum takilun. And they'll say, so you may learn wisdom, but it's actually the aku. You work the aku. Allah wants us to keep the, keep the juices of our mind flowing, right? The exercising of our mind. And there's other languages that exercise it too, but in terms of Quran, I don't think anything matches that. So Allah said he put it there that you will use your brain, your aku, to exercise our brain. Now, that's, that's the Quran, why it's given that way. Again, the Tajweed, all the other things, I'm not playing that down. That's important. But understand what this is about. What this is about. And why we do, do, uh, do what we can with what we know from Quran. And does this mean everyone going to speak Arabic? No, I don't speak Arabic outside of doing this myself. So that's not it. But if we have some knowledge from Quran, and we can share it and show some things to help all of us along, then alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. But no one is to, to feel bad that they don't know Arabic or speak to somebody in Arabic, where the bathroom at in Arabic, and all. no, no, that's not, that's not what this is, that's not what this is about, most certainly not, okay? So, and, and here, here, here's the juice, is flowing. How, how do you connect Stone with logic and in apartments. Because that's the language of Quran to, to work out the puzzle to keep to keep your mind flowing 
and figuring it out and going in there and keeping it flowing. And you know, uh, uh, I don't want to get off point because I would be here all night. Just to give you this. You learn your alphabet and there's 28 alphabet, right? Arabic alphabets of Quran. And those alphabet are split into 14 each about. And they're called sun letters and moon letters. So if nothing else, whether you understand it or not, when you immerse yourself into that language of Quran, you're immersing yourself in the light. So we leave it right there. Because there's sun letters and moon letters. The sun letters project itself and the other letters reflect, just like the moon reflects the light of the sun. So when you're in Quran, you're immersing yourself in the light. And Allah says in Surah Ibrahim and other places, we have sent this Quran down to bring man from thulam, oppressive darkness, into the light. And when you go in Quran, just by the way it's organized in those letters, you see mixing of light, moon and sun, okay? So, <laughs> it's kind of hard to talk about Quran and, and be in Quran and just cut it, right? And not get sort of excited. So, now, we're going to try to step by step so we won't be, be long, right? Now, if you have your Quran, go to Surah 17, Bani Israel. So it's 17. I had 13. If you have your Quran, get your Quran. And if you have your Quran, give you a little time to get your Quran if you're not following right now. And I'm going to read what this says. This says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa kula insanin. Elazemnahu. Now remember our vocabulary. Emzenahu to'irahu. You see, bird, right? If, again, I got always say if you don't know the Arabic and you see a word, just treat it like a picture. You take a picture in your mind, or you see somebody now and you see them later and you recognize them from that point, right? So if you looked at that vocabulary and and you saw. I don't know if I have wrote it out, but I'm going to give it to you. Taira, Taira. Yes. Taira, Taira. And you see that same word with a few vowel uh, things here, but it's the same. The ta, the ya, and the, and, the, and the ra. So if you took a picture with your mind, now you still see this again. Wakulla, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wakulla insanin. Elazemnehu to irahu fi unukihi. Every human being, right, in sand, every human being, or every human, every person has connected, attached a bird in his neck. Taira, the word. Taira is bird. So see how this will draw your attention? What? Every human being has a bird attached in his neck. Now, take out your Quran if you have it. This is why this is important. And we're trying to help in whatever way that we, what we can. Is this. Take out your Quran. Now I'm going to show you something here. Or share something. I have Yusuf Ali. Quran. Right here. Going to that same place. Surah 17. Ayat 13. And. He says. This is the translation. It says. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Every man's fate. See. Fate. He has fate. But the word is actually bird. Taira. And we showed you bird. And we're going to look at a few ayats where you see the word taira as bird. Every man's fate we have fastened on his own neck. And on the day of judgment we shall bring out for him a scroll 
which he will see spread open. Okay, that's one translation. That's Yusuf Ali, right? And you see it says faith. Okay? I have another Quran. Another Quran. The noble Quran, right? And the English language, right? Noble Quran. You see that? Let's go to so 17, I had 13. And it says, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, it says, and we have fastened every man's deeds. You see, that's why I say read as many different translations as you can. It's like a thesaurus, so you can be a little more relaxed and trying to and, and seeing how different words are used. Like he's saying deeds. Right? Deeds to his neck. And the rest says the same. If you have it, on the day of Yom Melikiyama, we shall bring out for him a book which he will find open, wide open. Okay? This noble Quran. And you see the word that he used? Deeds. Deeds. But here, Tyre. Tyre. Okay? Now I have another Quran. I'm going to do it with six, about six of them. I did it with about 20 of them myself. You see this Quran here? Translation, good word. Okay? Same. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim And it says here, uh, every man's fate. They use the word fate here again. Every man's fate we have fastened on his own neck. You see? Fate. B. Whatever, whatever translation you have, they're all good. Muhammad Pitthor. 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 And every man's, and this is like omen, they're saying augury, augury. A U G U R Y. Maybe you have this one, so you're reading that. Have we fastened to his own neck? I think you're getting the picture, right? One of my favorite, Muhammad Assad, translation. Muhammad Assad. And he says, in every human being's destiny, have we tied to his neck? Daira. Bird. So this is this is this is somehow giving us even another perspective of how the word bird is seen, even though it's bird, right? And we know what a bird is. And I do one more. I think this is. Uh, I looked at Mal Duty. I looked at all of them. I think this may be Malena Muhammad Ali. Uh, this Ahmadiyya uh, translation here. And he says, in every man's works have we fastened to his neck. So we did it this way to bring home this point of what we, what, what, what we say. And sharing the Quranic language. So you read, we just pointed this out in your Quran, faith, deeds, etc., وَكُلَّ إِنْسَانٍ أَلْزَمْنَاهُ تَوْئِرَهُ فِي أُنُكِّهِ Allah says, we have fastened, attached to every human being, his bird. So how can we see this now? You have the language, let your mind flow the way you want it to flow. But the language you see is bird. Bird. What message can we get from that as human beings? Brother, sister, know no limits. Know no limits. Your mind can fly as high as the sky. What they say, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit, brother. Sky's the limit, sister. You can achieve whatever it is you want to achieve. You can break the gravitational pull of just stand down low. The gravitational pull 
and sky's the limit, right? Fly as high as you want with your mind. You can achieve what it is that you want to achieve. That Allah has given us a mind, a brain, imagination that you can fly as far as you want. And just like that bird that flies so high, you know, the higher up you go, the broader your vision, right? And there are birds that, that, that ball eagle, they say his vision is so he can be five miles up and he can see that fish in the water and scoop straight down in there, right? That his vision is so broad. And you know, the higher up you go, the broader your vision, right? So what does it say? What can we get from that? That my head is like a bird. That we can fly, right? That sometimes you can, I can mention something right now. Or somebody can mention, just like a bird, you walk up on that bird, right? And pew, he fly away. Sometimes our attention span, you can be at Juma, you can be there, you can be listening right now for a minute, and something come to your mind, and your mind fly away, right? Attention span, bang, you done flew to California somewhere, right? You sitting here, but you done flew to Mecca somewhere in your mind, right? Or you done flew to your job. You know, sometimes you're sitting at Juma, and your mom is going on so long, you can see your boss waiting at the door while you ain't get back. Boom, you done flew there, right? So we can, our mind can fly. Allah gave us that mind like that that, 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 that we can take off. And you know, there's a saying, like a bird, even that plane they call a big bird. And you know what we say, right? You got to know when to fight and when to flight, right? When to fly, right? When to move your mind somewhere else. And to show you that, we say, what time did that flight come in? What time is my flight, right? To get on that plane and fly, right? So just, just, Pointing out now, you can work with that in your own mind, but just pointing out when you read what you just read, what we read, it said fate, omen, this, that, and the other. But the actual word is dire bird. So that's saying a whole lot, and that's so important for education and for telling our young and others. No, the sky's the limit, man. Let your mind fly as far as it can go. And you know what's so important about that? Even when we go to Quran. And we look around us and you see these beautiful birds and how they just take off and what they do. And you know, in Islam, birds is so important. We know that. And inshallah, that's how we're going to get to Surah 105. But we know that Allah tells us in Quran that the sons of Adam, for example, Cain and Abel, that Cain slew Abel, right? And I think you can find that in the of three. Three or five. I think it's three. Where when he killed him, he didn't even bury him. And it say a bird came and pierced the ground and gave him a sign of where to bury his brother. And he said, oh man, I, I couldn't even, I didn't even think to do it. It says that Solomon had men, jinn, 